this working? <laughs> yeah, I think we're live. Yes. The marvels of technology. Yeah, we're here. Hello, everyone. Great. All seven persons watching us. Yeah, but maybe this will be recorded and there will be more people here. I don't know. So, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try and see if it, if it works. Uh, I'm not sure, not seeing the other side, but we'll, we'll see. So, uh, thanks everyone for being here. We'll try, it is the first time we, we make any live stuff, so I think it, it's all new to us. Yeah, since it is working. So yes, we are uh, Mariano and Luna, as as you can see from the from the images, our talking heads. Uh, we are calling ourselves Orbis Thirties Games. So we're both from Argentina. We're living in, in Europe now, in different cities. Luna is in in Berlin, actually, where, where the Amaze is being held in a way though it's digital now but it's kind of the same it's in berlin and i'm in the uk in lincoln so okay great maybe we're having a little lag but everything seems to be going well so today we will be showing a bit of Imaginaria. Imaginaria is, that's the way we call it because we are actually Spanish speakers. So it, it, it came as Imaginaria, but the game is in English, so it can be Imaginaria also. I don't think it's, it's bad. Luna doesn't like it. Imaginaria? No. Okay. So yeah, we, we've known each other for a very long time now. And we decided to we decided to start making games like I don't know, 14 years ago. But we never actually took it off until now, until a few years back. And now, yeah, always with, with some pauses and and stuff. But now we we are doing this not full time because we we have day jobs, but as much as full time as we can. So yeah, the, so this game Imaginaria is the one that we, we submitted to the Amaze Festival. We actually were nominated for the Humble New Talent Award. So it's not for the game itself, it's for the whole of our project. We have another game coming up at the end of the year if everything goes well. Maybe we can show a trailer at, at the end of, it, of this. And uh, we made one before, uh, a freeware game for the Adventure X jam that it was last year because the, the Adventure X in, in London, the, the convention was obviously uh, cancelled. So they, they replaced it with a, with a game jam and we, we made a game jam. I think it was a kind of a little success during the, the game jam. And there were a lot of awesome games. And what we did was a, a little visual novel um, with a medieval setting. It's kind of not safe for work, but it, it's funny. It's about uh, cursed penises in a medieval setting. So you, you play as a witch that you have to turn those penises that have become... Uh, bewitched back to normal and uh, there's it's all tongue-in-cheek and I, I think it's funny <laughs> I, mean, I don't know I think it went well <laughs> Luna what do you say it went well yeah it went well and it is funny so uh, you can play the, that game f for free at our website that, that's over there orbis30sgames.com there we have also our twitter at orbis30sgames GMS actually to so you can follow us 
So, well, uh, ah, another thing about Imaginaria. You can see in the in the screen that it says made with RenJS. And you're probably wondering, what is RenJS? Well, RenJS, it's a, a, a game engine or a library, as, as you, whatever you can call it. Also, another parenthesis, Luna is the engineer here. She studied system, uh, yeah. Systems engineering, maybe that that's the, the name in, in English. Yeah. I studied filmmaking, so the, the programming and stuff, uh, uh, I just very little know, so not much. So Luna uh, themselves created RenJS, that is a, a tool, uh, maybe you can talk about it better th than me because Okay, it's a um, RenJS is a library for HTML5 games uh, that allows you to make classic visual novels and with some point and click uh, features just by writing a script like a movie script. So it's very easy to set up the game and, and have something running. Uh, this is what we use for for our previous game, uh, the Adventure Adventure X Game Sham, and also for Imaginaria and many other games that well, I've created and some other people are using it too. Uh, you can visit uh, the RenshaYS webpage, that's there in the corner also, RenshaYS.net, and there you can check the library and make your own game. Yes. It's uh, completely open source and free to use. I can I can say for sure that it's very easy to use because I I used a, a lot of it to make the previous game for the the script itself the the dialogues and stuff and it's very easy if I can use it everyone can use it I think that should be the slogan <laughs> so yes so we can start playing a bit of. Imaginaria with uh, with uh, the commentary of the um, the director themselves, Luna. Because, yes. Because uh, well, tell us about the game, the inspiration from it, and and all all the stuff. Okay, so Imaginaria it's a uh, it's a very strange game we could say. It's uh, more like a documentary and a walking simulator. There are not really any goals or objectives uh, in the game, but just to walk around uh, an Antarctic station. Um, Imaginaria means uh, a night watch, basically. It's uh, something they do in the military. So basically it's uh, both the person and the duty of going from building to building and checking that everything is okay normally during the night um, in antarctica we used to do him to do them uh, so the game is based on my experiences in antarctica i was there for about a year and some months in 2016 and uh, since then, well, I wanted to make a game. The, there are many, many ways in which this game came to be, basically. Since I was there, I always wanted to make a game about it. I, uh, but didn't know exactly what. It, Antarctica is a really crazy place, so there are many, many things to say about it. And... But the main thing that I wanted to to say about uh, this whole place uh, and experience that I I did there was just the truth. Just how do you live there? What do you do exactly? Why are people living in Antarctica, etc. And this, from all of these ideas, came Imaginaria. Uh, so the game, it's basically about that, about the, doing the Imaginaria in a cold night in Antarctica. So you yeah, can, be, you, you yeah. can say that the objective of, of the game is to just 
yeah. go around the station and verify that nothing is on fire or destroyed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's something that happens in Antarctica sometimes. And the game basically started, I started making some sort of prototype of this game uh, back when I was in Antarctica. But it started as a text uh, adventure game. I made uh, a library and an engine to do text adventure games there that was called Imaginaria also, but I never finished it and I never finished the game that I wanted to do. Uh, but I always had this idea of walking from place to place and just seeing the things in, in each of the buildings and tell a bit, little story about them. And finally, all of these years later, uh, I can I can show you the game finally. Uh, in Antarctica, also I I did a lots of pixel art tutorials, and they more or less work. And so that's why uh, I was able to to draw everything for the game. And it, it was also a I way. Wanted... I, I I think Luna. It was also a way to not go completely mad in Antarctica, right? Yeah, exactly. So the thing in Antarctica is that in summer you have a lot of work because at least in support positions you are helping everyone, all the researchers there with uh, their projects and whatever else they need. But during winter, there's just not a lot of things to do. Um, so you need to find things to do yourself. And what I did was learning pixel art and creating the first version of French yes, and this other engine that I talk about. And I also made a, a few other games that you can find in my itch.io page. It's Luna from the Moon there. And, uh, yeah, so, so, I was, yes, okay, so I continue, I was for many years wondering how to actually make the game, and I was inspired by, by a manga that I read last year, a lot, it's called uh, In the Heart of Fukushima, we, we can and, show the, the cover, yeah, we can show the cover, the, this is the one on top of the game. Yeah. So this manga is about a worker from the nuclear station in Fukushima, after, like a relief worker, uh, after the accident in 2011, after uh, the tsunami. And in, in this uh, book, he tells the basically just what he was doing as a relief worker the places where he was uh, where he was uh, working the kind of equipment he was using etc and i thought the formula worked really well for for what he was showing and i could do something similar for antarctica so basically showing the places and the equipment and um, every task that we were doing and so yeah that, that was one of the biggest inspirations that I had for actually start working on this and uh, yeah to show that that it, it can be done I mean yeah it's like uh, sometimes we we like all these mediums and not only video games but also comics and cinema and all of that and sometimes uh, you forget that that you can do certain things that it, it it's okay to do them like like this comic it's basically a documentary in the form of a, of a manga so why not do a, a video game also i know that there are lots of 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 that kind of games in the indie scene and all of that but one tends to forget with all the overwhelming majority of uh, narrative games and in, in 
yeah, well, this is also a narrative game, but I in other genre games, you can say, well, we're also trying to make genre games, but, well, th this was different for, for a while. <laughs> so uh, we can finally get out of this little igloo that you were living in. Yeah. I think. So the game, as you can see here, is just uh, a little point and click like the very old school point and click games where you can just click around and see what's happening and i wanted to be real about how you you go around in the station so the first thing you have to do is put on the equipment the boots and the, the overalls and take a radio and <coughs> And finally you can get out for most of the things that you can click around there will be a little story and i want to say all of these stories are real either they happen to me or to people i know personally i cannot really reveal anyone uh, who who was part of this or even myself i don't like uh, too much showing my face because then, if someone from from this old shop finds me, uh, I may be in problems, but let's hope uh, it doesn't get out too much. <laughs> you can change your nationality <coughs> and go to Antarctica with, with a, another country. Yeah. Everything is possible. I really like the this screen of the... Of the uh, how do you say it in English? Akalita. Cove. The cove, yes. Yeah. Um, so... A little bit of a sound, maybe. Ah, you can hear the, the sound of the... Of the, of the cove, yeah. So yeah, every time you go to a new scenario, there, there's a little story, and when you click on stuff. Uh, I think the, the, the game is also fit for, for, for the games, we, for, for how we call ourselves. The, the name Orvis Tertius. Um, maybe if l fans of literature may may know that it's a reference to um, a short story by Jorge Luis Borges and Tlono uh, Guarorvis Tertius, where they find uh, an encyclopedia of a fictional universe and all of that. So yeah, that is kind of the the snobbish reference because we, we like that that story, but also we liked that. Orvis Tertius is basically third world in Latin and in a way that's where we come from and where Borges was from also, the third world and this game is kind of what is life in an Antarctic base from a third world country yeah. in a way <laughs> I think uh. that uh, Luna you you saw bases from other countries, right? Also. Yes, exactly. I think this game will not really uh, be recognizable for anyone from another country that was in Antarctica, uh, because well, every station is different from every country, and also every year is different in Antarctica. Everything is changing all the time, so. Uh, what I'm telling in the game, which it's all true, uh, may be surprising for for people, um, because yeah, things are old and falling apart, especially the machines. Mm -hmm. But that's how science is done at the end of the world. <laughs> I like the story that we we put that bit in the trailer that uh, it, it's morbid but it, it's 
it's a good story. <laughs> that um, what well, if if somebody unfortunately dies over there, it's it's kind of difficult to fly the corpse back to the mainland, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so everything is quite insulated there, and you you are very dependent on the weather. So. If something happens, uh, you may want to be evacuated immediately, but the weather will not allow it, and sometimes people die, and they need to be kept uh, frozen somewhere, and that's uh, the frigorific chamber where we keep the frozen food. So and yeah, that year, yeah, the, we have food and, 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 and a dead, you, you had a, a cold, yeah, that yeah. Year. Um, it kind of reminds me of The Shining, where yeah. they, they put Jack Nicholson in in the chamber there. Yeah. The problem also was that this year uh, Cook was uh, quite superstitious, and he didn't like to have this guy there, so he didn't enter while. While he was there in the chamber, and that's how we end up eating canned food and dry food for basically a whole week and a bit more. Canned food for a week? Yeah. Eh, it's like when we were students. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Kind of the same. Also in the, le in the game the, there are... Uh, some dialogues with other people and no portraits but I think it gives a, a different atmosphere there's also kind of a secret room uh, we don't know if anyone has found it yet but we don't know maybe we should add at some point achievements on steam so maybe it will be a clue to what to do oh uh, yeah because uh, we haven't said this yet but this game we we published it uh, a month ago already it's available on steam and on each if you want to buy it also yeah i, I like the 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 thing that most of the food was uh, uh, already past its due date. I like that that detail also. It's very very thorough. <laughs> very real, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so this game, um, I started making it about uh, some months ago, actually, and. I finished it, we finished it quite quickly. Uh, I really needed to to get this game out of myself uh, in a way. Uh, so I just one day start writing and drawing and after some times I, I told Mariano help me edit this text and let's just publish this game. And that's what we did. Uh, but before that, we of course were making these other games, uh, as Mariano was saying. Um, the most important, which uh, is called Personal Rocket, and I think we should talk a bit about it. Maybe so, we can talk about it instead yeah. of showing the uh, whole game, a whole let's play of Imaginaria. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because um, this all started because. We, we are big fans of adventure games in general, so we wanted to make a, a traditional point and click, an old school style game. And um, so we had this idea, I think the idea for this game came like about 12 years, 12 years ago. And we started making a rough sketches of the story and all of that. And then, well, life happened. We had to study, we, I moved, also Luna, so we, we couldn't uh, start again. And Luna 
also that same year in, in Antarctica resurrected that project so it, it yeah. was really productive I think you should just move to Antarctica forever so we can work I wish <laughs> and become millionaires with indie games don't think it's gonna happen but who knows maybe if you live in Antarctica and make it long enough game, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can have our own rockets also our personal rockets and fly to space it's it's fashionable now to the billionaire space race maybe we can join so yeah personal rocket okay so uh, uh, th there's a little question in there's a question in youtube yeah okay uh, someone is asking if during the game you can bump into another person and the answer is yes um there's a character that is the biologist of the station uh, he was one of my best friends there and uh, you can meet him because uh, many times he was working at the same time everyone else was sleeping uh, around 3 in the morning you could find him in the laboratory and that's uh, the encounter that, that I came so yeah but uh, as we said the game only shows uh, dialogue and that's in that sense there are no portraits themselves of the characters but uh, I, I like that it's it's up to your imagination yeah i wanted to say something about this place also so this was um my office uh the place i, I used to work in yeah um it was it still is my favorite place in the whole world and it was on top of a hill and i could work the walk there every morning and be completely at peace in in my little shack at the end of the world it was very very good that's good to forget that you were among a lot of military people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. So maybe we can show a bit more. Yes, we. So about personal rocket, it's a uh, we were trying to make a, an old style point and click game. Also, Luna did uh, the pixel art of the game. Uh, they say that. It's not as good that the Luna has become better at pixel art, but I think it's quite good. It's personal rocket. I, I can see that you have a style and it's very good. So it's worth it. So yeah, maybe we can show the trailer for the game. Yeah, for personal rocket. We will disappear for a second, but. Here we go. Personal rocket. <laughs> ah, it, it's over here now. <laughs> I like it. We can maybe. There we go. On top of, of Imaginaria, we show it like that. This is the first time that we're doing streaming or basically yeah. anything. So I think it's going really well. I don't know if if there's a lot of lag or not, but I think I like it how, how it's going. Yeah. So yes, 
this game, Personal Rocket, um, it's also influenced by literature. We, we are also big fans of um, an American writer called Thomas Pynchon. Maybe some people will, will know of him. He, he famously appeared on The Simpsons with a paper bag on his head doing a, a, a book blurb for Marsh, Marsh Simpson's book. And it's actually his voice. He's famous for being a, a reclusive, but not not actually a reclusive. He just doesn't like uh, to give interviews or to be taking pictures. So there are almost no images of him or recordings of his voice. Only on The Simpsons and the trailer he did for one of his books once. And Personal Rocket is comes from a a quote from his novel Gr Gravity's Rainbow, and it goes. Uh, the themes in his works are something we were inspired by, so it's a bit about uh, paranoia and uh, conspiracy theories and all of that. But the thing with Pynchon and what we wanted to make, here's the, the key art I'll, to show something different. Um, the thing about paranoia and conspiracies in Pynchon's work and what we wanted to make uh, it's like that what what it does to to people and to and uh, also for metaphors of existence of how to make sense of the world and all of that so it's not uh, they're not stories about the conspiracies themselves usually in Pynchon's novels and maybe in our game we'll see the conspiracies tend to just uh, go uh, like I, I don't know how, how to say it. it it never gels into anything the conflicts uh, of the conspiracies themselves you you don't know whether they're real or not that's what paranoia is about so their story is more more about the, the people the characters and how they are changed by paranoid thought and what paranoia does to you so I think that's what we wanted to make with, with Personal Rocket, that we are still finishing some, uh, the, the last bit of the game. If there are any publishers out there who want to fund us or give us any money, we're open. But uh, if not, we, I think we'll, we'll just self-publish like we self-published Imaginaria. So th also th this key art that we're showing is, uh, it was made by Pedro Mancini, he's a, a very successful comic book artist and writer from Argentina. He's becoming famous in Europe now also, in France and, and, and stuff. He's got many, many books published in France also now. So if you want to check him out, Pedro Man Mancini, M-A-N-Z-I-N-I. Because he's awesome, and I don't know if what else we can we can go back to showing Imaginaria and play it a, a bit more if you want. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, maybe the how we're making Personal Rocket. Ah yes. So the game engine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a classic point-and-click adventure game and we're fans of uh, What Should I? Uh, their games are quite inspiring for us. In fact, one of the games that I think pushes us to, to say, okay, let's do a, a little game that 